more polishing, just for something else to do. Love my polishing. The key is while you're polishing is you always go one way with each grade. That way you're not getting to get scratches and everything in as well. So oh. at 600 I'll go up and down, 800, 1200, and then we'll buff. So that's now 400 grit is uh, is lengthways. Great exercise. I bloody need it. Thing for a paddle. You can see this is already 400 grit already giving me a really nice luster. Um, unlike this other side over here, which is um, this side here, chalky, porous, still got a lot of. Uh, Quite a lot of um, um, repairs to be done, like this little spot here. There's a couple over here that we've repaired. This one here, but even given that a light polish, all of a sudden you start to see your surface come back. Essential: wash off all of the shit off it before you change to the next grade. That's really essential. That um, that grit that you're sanding on, you don't want to use that in your next paper. So a little bit of elbow grease, a lot. Like we're talking. I'm, I'm trying to track how many hours I'm putting into it. Uh, you know, we're get a built, and, and I'll start a little mold. You know, pretty of those poor buggers that, uh, that start them scratch. You know, I was lucky enough to get a mold. So this this polishing is just going on and on and on, and uh, we'll continue to do so for probably about three or four weeks until I get in absolutely perfect. Nice boat, mate. Looks great, doesn't it? Very modern. A man in his boat. Yeah. Jeez, mate, there's no zero eight zero on that cleat there, Ronnie. Come on. There was, there was. That's, that looks like a triple zero on no, no, eight. No, I have to shorten it down. Oh, okay. So you do as I say. No, no. <laughs> Whatever went wrong, though. I'm doing a video of it, so don't don't disparage yourself here. <laughs> Yeah, I get it. I get it. Two zeros. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Do you know how much I've taught that zero eight zero in the last few months? Like, yeah, have you guys? So, so we've got we've got Ronnie Ronnie Lilburn here from Liquid Edge and Leslie, his partner. And this is this man's responsible for this disease that we all have. I'm not. <laughs> oh yes, you are, mate. Shit, almost fell over again. So Liquid Edge Sailing Charters, we've got to look him up, look him up, down at Mort Bay in Balmain, very, very cool. <laughs> what do you reckon, Ron? Cracker. Cracker, eh? Cracker. You reckon I'm going to pass your next course? What is it? Ocean Sailing? Ocean Sailing. Righto. Yeah. What do you reckon, Leslie? Brilliant. <laughs> what a dream. Great dream. Classic. <laughs> Safe trip back to Sydney. Yeah, great to see you. Thanks, guys. Lovely to catch up. So we're here with the uh, one of the internal moulds of the Voyager, which is actually a, a set of butterfly stairs. This goes down into the starboard hull. Um, in fact, these are a set of stairs, so we're looking at this in reverse. So the bottom is in fact the top and the top to bottom, i.e. Um, but it is actually a fairly chalky surface. It's a bit hard to see on the video, but when we're getting close to this, in fact, we've got quite a, a nasty surface on there that can be rejuvenated quite easily. And the, the way we do that is with... Um, with wet and dry sandpaper and then right through to our buffing compounds. But um, I have around 30 of these moulds that are going to form the components of our boat. And, uh, and obviously, the nice thing about it is we have all the internal fit out of this boat as well as the external or the hull and the deck. So it's important when you're wet sanding that you don't use a, um, an ice cream container with water in it or a bucket with water in it because every time you dip your sandpaper, your 400 grit sandpaper, you're going to collect the debris that you've just removed and then reintroduce it back onto the mould and as you work through your sandpapers you're going to end up contaminating not only the water but you'll end up reintroducing scratches back into your mould and, and undo all the good work you've done. The grit sandpaper and a little bit of water with uh, obviously a bit of detergent in it, just dishwashing detergent, makes a nice lubricant, allows me to, uh, to get a, a good lubricant on the mould and a nice polished surface so you know this is in fact a sacrificial part of the mould so this part will be cut out and discarded but I'm notice I'm moving in one direction we're going to circular motion sand uh, at this stage uh, because we don't want to introduce scratches that are uh, not in one plane and then our next 
um, grade of sandpaper which will be around an 800 grit will in fact uh, go across the mould and uh, once I've cleaned this off and then we'll start with fresh water again very important stuff so I like to work in stages and uh, and just see my results as I go it's going to be quite a pleasing thing for um, sanding wet sanding and polishing although I have about uh, 900 square metres of it to go Important uh, with moulds where you've got the release angles here, you've got these beautiful little radiuses. You don't want to be sanding them flat because you might reintroduce something that's uh, a little bit hard to get the mould to, to release from. So a nice way of doing that is to just round up your paper and just lightly sand. And you'll notice I'm only really fingertip sort of pressure on here. And, uh, and, and I'd, most would advise not using your fingers at all, um, but if I was actually sanding to remove material, then definitely I would use something like a flat surface or a, a foam pad that can, conforms to, it, to, the, uh, to the curve of the mould. The issue with, uh, with that is you may miss a spot, and, uh, and obviously we want this to be a perfect finish, so we want a nice smooth curve all the way around, and, uh, and restoring this mould you know, could take a day to get this fella back to back to action and, uh, and, you, and an old fellow once said to me you should have eyes in your fingertips you should be feeling for any little imperfections I can feel one right there that means I've got to do a small gel coat repair there before I can go further so better to pick this up now than to try to you know obviously polish out a, uh, a gel coat you know you want to pull your product out and stick it straight in the boat with a quick buff and that's it that's what you want to do you don't want to be repairing stuff at the other end if you can avoid it now obviously So our butterfly stairs or our starboard uh, staircase is, is now ready and pretty much restored. I've been through my sandpapers, uh, wet and dry, of 800, 1000, 1200 and 1500 grit. And then we then moved on to uh, a cutting compound and then a fine cutting compound. And, and our final processes will be... Um, a uh, coat of sealer glaze, uh, which is a TR product. It's a partly a release agent. And then three or four coats of uh, release wax before applying the gel coat and then the final lamination. So uh, in a couple of days, we should have a, uh, a fully functioning module ready to put into our hull. Okay, so this is actually the starboard staircase. It goes down from the saloon down into the starboard hull. Um, you can see here the, the top part here is in fact the hatch at the bottom. So, and the bottom part down here is actually the uh, up on the deck, sort of up near the saloon. So, it's it's interesting seeing these things in reverse. I'm going to spray the white gel coat on next. Then we'll lay up the layers. Then we're going to remove it like we've done with every other module. So, it's pretty interesting stuff. So we chose a uh, white performance gel coat um, from Allnex in Australia here and then the laminating process requires a polyester resin catalyzed at around about 1.5% because of the humidity we have here in Jervis Bay. Um, one layer of 300 gram per square metre chop strand matting and then subsequent layers of, uh, of rovings and reinforcement depending on uh, uh, what and where it was needed. Um, all up around about two hours per layer for this particular module. Wow, well there's another module done. Uh, we've now done the, the butterfly stairs, we've got a tie layer on, it's all gelled up. You can see with the previous video when I sprayed him up. Um, I've got it all, there's now a 300 gram tie layer on that, so I can leave that for the day. And you can see all the, uh, the recesses here, what I did in, uh, in this area here. I've uh, once again I've mixed up a pro bond which is like a, a Q cell polyester mix. I've uh, filleted that so that there's no chance of air bubbles in here, especially down in that area on stairs where you you know you're going down up and down on the shoes. Or, um, and then a 300 gram tie layer. Once again, you can see these dark sections here, reinforced on edges just to um, areas where. You know, things going to cop a bit of load. Obviously, people go up and going up and down stairs. So, yeah, good job. Another Saturday. Uh, that took me about two and a half hours to laminate that first tie layer in.
All right. Some days are not so happy on the mould. And uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat this, but this thing has been one SOB. I have spent six hours releasing this absolute shit of a thing. And you can see here the, uh, the little cuts I've made here. I've released it all over. And fine watering it with this crane and, and pulling on these straps and belting it and hammering it and all the little black marks on it. Bad income over it. Like an excited kid at Christmas, I've, uh, I can't help myself and I've put these modules that I've made inside the mould, uh, obviously on blankets so I don't scratch it, but like a massive jigsaw puzzle I'm trying to work out how it's going to go together, where the depth of the sole is and all the, uh, all the components and how they fit in, but yes, yeah, step by step I'm going to get it made. So I'm pretty lucky to have just had two weeks off, honestly. Best holiday I've ever had, went to Canada, up uh, sea kayaking up in the West uh, Passage up in the, the inside passage, right up on the top of Princess Royal Island, honestly, bears, orcas, whales, and uh, the whole time I'm away, I'm thinking, I don't want to go back to the mold, don't want to go back to the mold, don't want to go back to the mold. Well, I'm back on the mold. <laughs> Goes pretty quick, those holidays. This week, uh, been a pretty big week. I've been able to uh, fully glass the bottom from the chines right through. Done another three layers of glass on there, solid glass. Up. Um, so yeah, back on the mould and, uh, and hopefully you might want to uh, join us or join me later on as I uh, get back into this normal life of mine which is uh, building boats. So check us out next time, subscribe, share it around, you know, share out the fun, <laughs> share out my hard yakka, I don't really mind, but uh, we'll see you next time on Life on the Mold.